obviously the matchup of the weekend over at Home Story Cup is was a pretty dominant uh, showing from the Protoss players. But into a lot of the PvP, especially in the finals, of course, and in one of the semi-final matches too. So the top left-hand side, we're going to be starting off with Yishi, our Pell Protoss player here, coming in, and is 0-1 and 0-2. 0-1 in matches, 0-2 in maps, as he lost against a live earlier, got 2 0 in the first series of the day. To the bottom right-hand side is going to be the Blue Protoss player, Stats, and he is, of course, coming into this 1-2 in map score, 0-1 in matches, because he is losing to a live, as we saw just previously on the stream. So, we saw that, and we're going to our third match of the day now, looking to see how this goes. After this match, Gummyho will be coming out to play as well. Gummyho will play against Stats, a live, and then Yishi. <clears throat> and of course it's the stats and the live matches of which Gummyho will play which will really make things very interesting I think in terms of how fit, how, you know how this series turns out how exactly this is going to end up going so you know I think Gummyho could really change things up here I think he could make quite a big difference even so it's going to be intriguing as we set on up into game number one of this BVP best of three double gateway coming down which is obviously what we expect to see in the early stages and we'll see there is going to be an adept based open stalker based open from each and we can sort of just you know, begin to think about what they might be overall, based on exactly what units these guys make in the early stages of the game. I was uh, casting that uh, Home Story Cup with Mana, of course, and uh, it was... Uh, I can't remember which series we actually casted the PvP from. Um, it was a pretty cool PvP, though, and it was really cool because Mana has just so much information, obviously, to kind of uh, talk about, and it was really nice to just be able to talk about so many of the different kind of... Uh, Little, little things in kind of the matchup, you know, like little bits and pieces that were going on. So, intrigued to see kind of how this ends up going. As you see two adepts apiece coming on out from either player right now. So, it's just going to be an adept based opening. Stats begin to move on to the map of a program the left hand side as well. I mean, just looking for proxies here initially, it seems. Which uh, I initially thought maybe something a bit strange from himself, but no, just looking for proxies of his opponent. Wants to play safely here, does not want to kind of lose out early to some kind of crazy play. Let's see this probe. Just going to keep scouting around, keep an eye on what's going on in the early stages as this comes down to the bottom left and just keeps on, again, looking around, seeing what's up. So probe moves around, two stalkers on the way as a follow-up from those adepts as we see. Two adepts going to move into each other right now and we see nice initial trade from Yishi. He actually gets the first shots off stats. Is going to be in trouble actually because he's going to maybe even lose an adept here. He loses one adept, wow. So Stats loses the first adept, and that is a little bit painful. Comes in, sees the pile on the low ground, though. And will identify that his opponent is probably looking to expand here very soon. Two Stalkers popping out in a moment or two from both players, and that means they will help to push these adepts away. As actually Yishi's train uh, goes into a bit of a rough spot here, where these adepts can't really get anywhere too useful. The overcharge is very well placed, and will actually clean up those... Uh, stats cleans up those two adepts without too much of an issue. Stats kind of nicely walled around here as well to kind of keep this uh, kind of side of the mineral line very safe from adepts. That's something I never really noticed too much about in kind of in PvP, honestly. Like, until I cast it with mana, like, I never really considered the fact that you do sort of wall one side of your mineral line to stop adepts getting in as easily. And it's very true. Like, you can just see that it's very true and it, it happens. So, that's a very interesting thing to sort of point out that. I don't know, I don't know. It's just one of those things that you don't think of walling so much in PvP as compared to PvZ. And PvT, you sort of think about it for the Reaper. But adepts are actually super annoying. So, if you can wall against them to some extent, it can be very useful. Now we do just see a Nexus coming down on the natural expansion from stats, so that's on the way. And obviously the expansion of Yishi is coming in as well. Both players just in sort of mutual agreement at this point to go into the Nexus, to go into this mid-game. Twilight Robo is on the way up from both as well, so very standard stuff. As we just set on up here and uh, look to see where exactly we uh, we end up. <coughs> two Stalkers, two Sentinels working their way through these unbuildable rocks on the low ground then. As you do see, free pros is transferring down the low ground as well. Blink is on the way from both players now. As we're just going to be seeing this uh, Nexus being Corona boosted out. A couple of extra gates coming down from stats right now. Just a couple of extra gates uh, coming into play. I'm just going to be seeing uh, where all of this goes. An immortal on the way out right now from uh, Yishi. I'm just going to be seeing that uh, immortal continue to roll on in. Small keeps uh, coming in right now. And you just see this uh, Hallucinated Phoenix starting to move up to the top side of the map. So Hallucinated Phoenix coming into the top side of the map. Wants to try and see what's going on as it moves in towards the main base. And 
Just looking to see what's up. Looking to see what is good as this hallucination. Moving over to the left, we see this hallucinated phoenix coming down the bottom left side of the map as well. There's our forges coming on up. Just about halfway done for now. Two sentries, two stalkers. The depth's still moving out. Not much going on, just waiting for Blink to finish up. I mean, the forge is interesting. Early forge from Yishi means he will have that plus one coming in early, which is very useful in stalker first. Stalker fights, but doesn't have so much of an effect on the disruptors, which is exactly what Stas is going for very early here. Robo Bay coming down, and it allows him to get those disruptors out a little bit earlier compared to his opponent, who is obviously going into that plus one instead a little bit earlier on as we see some stalkers pushing the front. Sentry taking a bit of damage already as well, and Mortal can try and push this back and you know, some good damage done, some damage onto those stalkers. Getting them a little bit low on health yet. I'm just going to see a couple of stalkers coming on in and just uh, joining up on top of this ramp. So, yeah, setting on up, getting ready to go. War Prism here from Yishi as well. This is going to be coming down the left hand side still. Just looking to be aggressive here with these stalkers. Really wants to kind of amp up the aggression as we see glaives coming in from both players now as well. So, we'll maybe introduce a few adepts into their compositions very shortly as we continue on with this. It's kind of um, interesting to see where uh, this continues. We see a few stalkers warping in. Still, both players playing fairly passively, right? Like 49 workers apiece, army supplies dead even. Upgrades are like slightly differently timed, but I do prefer Sat's composition. I mean, he's got two mortals to one. As he blinks forwards, he's going to catch a couple of stalkers as well. He's got two mortals to one. He's got, you know, the disruptors already coming out. And having a couple disruptors advantage means so much because obviously one disruptor shot is all it takes to change a game. But if you have more disruptors than your opponent, you can last in the sort of the disruptor fight for longer. You can take better fights overall. You don't have to blink away defensively as much. And so on. And so that you know, it goes on basically. You know, it just it continues as we see this hallucinated Phoenix from Stats is currently moving up the right hand side. And again, scouting has continued to be an important part of this game. You know, you want to make sure you know where your opponent's at. What's he up to? What's he building? Is he making any sort of dramatic move? Which might make things a little bit interesting. Gravity boost is coming in. The Observer Speed Upgrade is something you don't oftentimes see in the matchup. I mean, in any matchup, really. You know, super late game, sure, get that Observer Speed because you just have the money to build, you know, to use it, right? So it's very, very interesting here, the choice to go into that Observer Speed right from an earlier stage as we see Adept's going to start dropping in towards this mineral line on the main base. You can see already three, four workers going down. There's quite a lot of damage being done. Five, six workers now picked off. You see this Hallucinated Phoenix just coming in overhead. Overcharger, uh, sorry, Cannon is going to be uh, doing a little bit more damage, and the Overcharger just pick off that Hallucinated Phoenix as well. And still a few Stalkers here from Yishi, just uh, coming in towards this uh, left side. A couple more Disruptors coming out, and yeah, Disruptors starting to need to come into play, plus two attack coming in on this Forge to the right side as well. See the Stargate coming in from Stats as well. Stargate coming in from Stats, and yeah, I mean, Stargate coming in, we see again a few Disruptors here, and everything looking there. Uh, Looking pretty good right now is this uh, Warpism. Gonna back away off to the left hand side as a few stalkers blinking forwards. Getting a little bit of damage onto that Warpism, but not too much in the end. The rest of these units still just sat in the center here. Hallucinate Phoenix is gonna be uh, moving down to the bottom right hand side. You see that Warpism moving to the right hand side as well as Disruptor Shots coming in from uh, uh, Yishi there. Doesn't quite connect. Stats just about managing to get away, but man, that was a scary moment. Like, Jumping over there and all of a sudden there's a bunch of disruptors chasing an army down. That was uh, pretty hectic because I'm not sure why exactly Yishi's just sat here. I mean, I guess the War Prism is just not able to get much done with the overcharge around the cannons, I guess. Good defense my stats just denying Yishi from even getting an opportunity to utilize these units over here. So that's pretty nice as we see these couple of new Phoenix going to get taken down as well. Another Stalker warping in. And still a disruptor just out the front. And some Stalkers and Disruptor from Stats moving into the right-hand side as well. So lots of units right now from Stats. They're going to get aggressive, really. I mean, you look at this sort of attack from uh, him, and you can see, I mean, he's moving towards the fourth base of his opponent. He's got Hallucinated Phoenix leading the charge. A little bit behind that plus two upgrade, but that will be coming in shortly. As we see the Oracle now coming in as well. Revelation is so important in every matchup, but in PvP, if you can see where your opponent's Disruptors are or your opponent's units are, your Disruptors can just begin to get so much more done. And that's always going to be a pretty big deal. As I see the units just continue to move down to the bottom left. Disruptors. More disruptors coming in from Yishi now. 7 to 7. I mean, you look at the unit count, it actually is very even. 
You can see a couple of motors on either side. The stroke count is a little bit favoring to Yushi, but that changes very quickly anyways with warpins. <coughs> just slight differences here. The one Phoenix I found very interesting, I guess, just to hunt down the warp prism, which it seems to have already done. One kill on it. So yes, warp prism has been killed off. That oracle is out, but it hasn't revelated just yet. And now we're going to see stats completely out of position as Yishi moves towards the front. And Yishi is going to take down a pilot. He's going to get rid of this robot facility as well. A big pick off considering the fact that this is going to be a destructive based game. And with the disruptors, Yishi can push stats away from his own natural expansion. So that's in a really awkward spot now. Like, this is very difficult for him to fight against. I don't actually know how he fights against it because, I mean, he sort of has to, but like, how? Disruptor goes the way of Yishi as well. So that's a good fight for him initially as another disruptor comes forward. This time, stats will get the kill. So two disruptors straight now. If he's so far, nice disruptor here. Like four is going to reach the disruptors. They didn't quite make it. There's more force fields coming down. Oh no, it's stats. He takes another big shot here. 24 workers lost. Still a few stalkers in his natural expansion. At the same time, he's actually sent his own stalkers across the map. So he's decided, no, I'm not just going to turn around completely. I'm also going to look for some counter damage here. And he has blink on these. Is he paying attention? The disruptors come in. Big connections. So many stalkers of stats just disappear. And he's still not paying attention. Yishi defends at home with the disruptor hits. However, stats is starting to clean up over here as well. Another big clump of units going down. I'm not sure what that was. As immortals again taken down as well. Supplies are staying very, very similar. Which is a very surprising situation considering as it is stats that ends up defending. Wow. I mean, both players end up defending, but both of them ended up trading surprisingly evenly given the situation. 9,000 to 8,500 resources lost. Like, absolutely crazy. Stats really turned that around. Deciding to send the stores across the map was so smart. Realizing that he wasn't probably going to be able to get through that kind of position very easily because of the disruptors. Wow, that's really crazy. Four against three disruptors. Problem is for stats, he lost a robo. That's hugely important because it means his disruptive reproduction is very slow in comparison to his opponent. He's going to have a plus three upgrade lead, but again, that's only so important. You know, it gets to a point where actually upgrades against disruptors, well, it is going to come down to just the fact that disruptors kill everything. And the stalkers, you know, they do a bit of damage here and there, but not too much. As oh, Wow, the disruptor goes down and a mortal gets hit as well. It's a nice connection from Yishi, and it's against stats who's going to be pushed back. So that's going to pull it down to the bottom right hand side and there's a disruptor and immortal just coming out of this main base. And it's going to be seeing stats moving up through the center of the map. So stats moving up through the center, a couple more stalkers warping into the side here. This disruptor is just going to hang out to this top left hand side. I mean there's just too much here really from Yushi. There's no way stats can just push his way into this. He's going to start going into charge now. He's going to start getting some zelda but it says oh, blink away is at the last moment but does work out. Some adepts across the map here are... Eh, they killed a couple of probes. Not too much though. Three workers killed. So at that stage of the game, a free work isn't that much of a difference. It's, oh, lone disruptors in the center. A disruptor and a stalker, actually. Both of those go down very quickly. Mistake from Ishii. While playing in this position right now, you know, he is ahead. He's got more disruptors. He's got more stalkers. Doesn't have as many immortals. Those disruptors really make the difference. So I do feel as though Ishii's in a better spot right here. Just uh, needs to make sure he doesn't throw away too many units. And the stalker's coming over to the right-hand side. Stat's going to reposition himself, see what direction he can go in from. In fact, going to come all the way up here and a couple of adepts just shading forwards. We're going to see what he can do. Blinking forwards, actually going to miss that adept as they shade away. And it's going to come straight in towards this fourth base and it's going to be a reaction from Yishi, of course. And kills three stalkers, kills a pylon as well. He's actually going to get his first disruptor shot as well. I mean, this is pretty nice. He actually now has to blink away. He takes a bit of damage on the way out. I mean, that sort of move into the disruptors may be a little bit kind of uh, hopeful. I mean, it did work out, I guess. And now also pushing up the left-hand side stats. All of a sudden, he's actually creating a huge supply lead for himself. So, uh, he actually, one of the differences I didn't really mention is talking about a couple of workers going down here and there, but Satch actually uh, took himself into a big worker lead. He's on a 10 to 15 worker lead for a while. Oh my god, on the other side of the map, he blinks towards, he gets every single disruptor. All of a sudden, stats, he's gonna trade so well here. Disruptors, uh, sorry, soaker upgrades will help so much now as the blink battle begins. And stats still moving it forwards up the left side of the map as well. I mean, this army's gonna trade out more or less fairly evenly between the players as stats will go in and move in towards the third base at the same time as well. And actually, each is gonna lose so much. To go back to what I was saying before though, basically stats took like a 10-ish you know, worker lead for a little while. And that 10-ish worker lead is, you know, seems to have just given him that little bit of boost in terms of amount of units here. And now those units are obviously playing off, and he's, well, traded well on the right side. He's traded well up here as well. That was a great set of engagements from stats. I mean, just, uh, brilliant. I mean, sees the opportunity to blink forwards, get rid of the disruptors, trade out with his opponent's stalkers. And going across the map with the stalkers was a great idea for him. 
And it sort of was, but then he didn't actually control them and he got hit by disruptors. If he'd actually just uh, microed against those disruptors, stats might have just straight up won. Because if he kept those stalkers alive, it could have been a very different scenario. Same could be said for Yishi though, because he obviously lost a lot of stalkers too to a disruptor shot. So it's very um, difficult to sort of um, make all of that work out, I guess. So bottom right hand side, Yishi is our blue Protoss player. Coming in here, fighting from a 1-0 deficit. Let's see if he can take his first map of the day of the group in what is now his second series as we have to the top left hand side stats. He's going to be our Red Pros player coming into this best of three. And we're going to see what he can get up to as well. I do find it kind of funny that this is like the exact same group from Lay 156. Minus the fact that Yishi replaces Max at like, it's so funny. Whatever. All right, sorry. Cool, so. Set up into this, and I'm just gonna be seeing a uh, couple of gates coming down from both players here. So a couple of gates coming down from both in the early stages, and just gases as well. Now, gases kind of be mine at different rates from both players, three and zero, against two and two. Like, it's very, very different, but it's, it's very, it's not very different. It's, it's different, but it's very similar, really. Like, it's not gonna make a major impact. There's just one kind of a different amount of gas at any point in time based on maybe if they're going to make stalks or depths first. Either way, they should kind of come out fairly evenly in the early stages of this game. Probe just going to come up to the uh, main base now. Just going to pop on in here, have a little bit of a look to see what it can get up to. It's just going to scout around and see what is going on. A couple of gates here, Cybercore from stats. All going to be finishing up and Nishi just should be fairly content with kind of how this is going. Couple of stalkers on the way out right now from stats. We see a stalker on the way from Yishi as well. No second stalker just yet. But there it is. So stalkers here early. I mean, it's Dasan, right? Dasan's a bit of a weird one. So it's um, a little bit of a, a little bit of a weird thing right now as we see that Mothership Core is on the way up. Wolf Gate coming in from both players. And we'll see how aggressive each of them wants it to be. A probe from stats is uh, currently chasing the probe. Yishi wants to make sure no nonsense comes up over on this right hand side of the map. May as well keep track of it and make sure. So that's some nice little information for him. His stats stops up two more stalkers. Yishi with a similar sort of thing. And stats will be the first to poke across the map to try and see what he can find. So we're just moving forwards here. And uh, yeah, seeing what he can uh, locate in the next few moments. So moving on forwards. What's going on over here? The stalkers of Yishi actually pick up that probe as uh, stats uh, doesn't really realize that the probe kind of baits his own probe in. Now this is a very even fight here actually as we're going to see stalkers trading out and actually stats loses out in the very end here because he actually takes a lot of free shots oh he's really chasing up this rabbit he loses his own stalker stats um a massive misplay like that just was not meant to happen at all recalls back home because of the overcharge that is not meant to happen like that was just a complete move command mistake didn't even target down the stalker which was low on health so big mistake by stats loses a stalker early now he's used a recall he doesn't have as much energy to overcharge at the front so um that's very crazy. So just gonna see those few stalkers just sat on the uh, on the ramp. I'm just gonna see the stalkers poking forwards and just trying to get rid of this pylon here. A couple of sentries, just gonna be trying to help out as well as stats. Obviously trying to hold this uh, gold base. Obviously, if he loses this and Ishii is expanding to it, which he is, it will be very problematic. So he has to be very very cautious. And there's a Stalker's coming forwards, and actually it's just a better unit count for Statsy with the faster warp is because he's back at home. The four fields are very good as well, and he brings it to three Stalkers on three Stalkers, but also better health, and also the two sentries as well. And now it's still free on free, but lower health for Stats, as he is going to pull back now. Really good trade from Stats, good engagement. Saw the opportunity, propped those four fields down, and both players are going to end up on a gold base here as the game continues to develop. Robos have finished as well. Observer going to be the first out for... Um, yeah, obviously it's just going to be coming out and looking to see what's going on. I'm just going to be seeing what else is going to be happening as we see these uh, stalkers and a couple of sentries starting to work their way through these rocks on the left hand side. So just starting to push their way through this. Is that mini lag spike there. Twilight Council coming up from stats right now. So Twilight Council coming up from stats as this observer of stats also is moving down a little bit. We see the uh, few units of Yishi. Still just around a couple more depths from uh, Yishi going to go up the left hand side as well. Probably trying to harass this mineral line, but Rock's already destroyed. 
surprised Yishi isn't doing the same because you know you look at this and you realize like hey you know I'm, I'm about to try and abuse the gold minerals and he doesn't yet realize that his opponent's you know found a way to deal with that actually Sats could do a similar thing but hasn't tried to just yet as we see him going forward here a little force field and I was gonna say he could probably use the force field so kind of make sure he gets the kills and he will two adepts go down and two probes are killed for them but still Stats the one picking off a lot of army of his opponent as Twilight comes down. It is going to be the blink upgrade to begin with from both players here. Safe way to get set up in towards the middle stages of this PvP. Real as those stats could maybe get aggressive. He's got an immortal out right now, you know, get across, maybe try and do something. He should know he's got a bit of a better unit count. Maybe if he gets a warp prism out, like after this next immortal or something. A lot of potential there. Has to be careful. Moving through the center is difficult due to the force fields available though. And you saw a stalker here, which he did kill off. So Yishi knows that this army is coming. Stats does just back away because of it. Waiting for Blink at least then. You can see that uh, Hallucinated Phoenix gets taken down quickly. So not too much scan information gains. Another Immortal pops out. And again, I wonder how interesting a kind of War Prism could be right now. Get that across the map. Even kind of Immortal drops could be very good on this map. Just because you can attack and harass. And you can get back home so quickly because of the size of the map and close by air distance. That you can then defend. So that might be something that could be pretty cool to think about here on Das and on the other side of things. You know, you do get counted very quickly as well, and so you do have to be cautious not to have too many units out of position. As you see the Robo Bay coming down. The Forge comes in as well, it's about halfway done already. And this pylon just sat up this high ground. <laughs> Stalkers, sentries, and immortals all gonna be moving forwards here. Just gonna be seeing the uh you know, just moving forwards and looking to see what's up, actually trying to do a little bit more damage onto that first sentry. Shield's gonna be uh Taking off of that, nothing too much though. Stats once again realizing he can't just attack in. At the same time, probably says, "Well, I don't want to. I'm investing into plus one. I'm investing into a robo bit. Like disruptor time. Let's go." So he's uh, very ready for this. As he comes across the map, you'll see extra gates of his opponent. Now a third base as well. It's interesting. So a third base and extra gates. Stats also has a third base, but much earlier. So Stats has to realize that he's kind of in the more oh, kills the earth done. Stats has to realize he's in the better position here in this game. As we see these units gathering together, Yishi gonna break up this ramp here very soon. And Stats, well, he's already moving into position to deal with this now. His greed, is it gonna pay off for him or is he gonna be punished? Well, let's find out. Hmm, it's gonna be difficult to move up this ramp. Force fields could be huge. Stats just a little bit slow on those. It doesn't quite uh, make, uh, it doesn't quite work just yet. So those units just sat to the top side. A few stalkers blinking away from the natural expansion as well now. Trying to get away. War Prism will come back in from Yishi and. Just gonna come in probably a little, uh, yeah, I may continue to harass over on this side, you know, we'll open a few more stalkers. So that's a very odd spot where he's gotta kinda of decide where he wants to be at any point in time because of this multi pronged aggression of his opponent. So he has to be very cautious. That said, I mean, this, you know, you know this army of uh, Yishi is very much so stuck in this location here, you know, he constantly rotate around to the center of the map because it is just a kind of a ground based movement army, so. There's not going to be too much on this side, and that's something the that stats can kind of keep in mind. He actually loses, I love this, actually disruptors over here to defend, and he leaves the main army over here. It's actually a very good decision, as we're going to be seeing these stalkers. Going to start taking a little bit of damage here. Disruptors will start be targeted, but the disruptor shot, the first one is very good. The second one, too, hits the sentry, at least. Well, it should be enough as an overcharge comes down as well, and stats will defend this very handily at the front. Yishi, with a continued warping over here, as he has a lot of gateways in produ you know, being used. He has no disruptors, remember. No upgrades as well. He's super all in for this attack. I mean, he's going to keep on pushing forwards. And well, let's see what stats has. He sends forwards this first disruptor shot. Hits the immortal. That's the kind of guaranteed damage you can get done here. As the disruptors come forwards, the stalk is actually fairly low on health. Well, I just know, not low on health, but out of blink, so they couldn't get away. And we're just going to be seeing stats down the right-hand side as well at the same time now. Looking to see what else he can do. Moving forwards here takes a little bit of a fight. Force field's coming down. Stats still winning over on this right-hand side. Still defending back at home as well. Disruptors will come off cooldown very soon. First Immortal about to fall. I mean, even if it doesn't fall right now, it is going to go down pretty soon after. As we see, Stalkers still trying to fight a couple more Stalkers warping in. But still, Stats has so much army on this side of the map as well. Pros will pull forwards again. It's a bit of an awkward defense over here from Stats, but eventually he pushes it away. And eventually he still has this army, which is just going to win out over here on this side of the map as well. So, Stats still looking very good for now. I'm just going to be seeing a little bit more damage being done. Actually, counterattack from Yishi is interesting because it is a kind of map where you can counterattack on very quickly. And Stats might just have to go across the map to defend this. We'll see how much damage his Disruptors can do. Blink forwards. Disruptor shot does go off. Those second Disruptor gets killed. Stats is going to kill the gold base. So you can probably now justify just pulling back home and cleaning up the rest of this. I mean, there's not too much left over really from Yishi. Even these Immortals are in a little bit of trouble right now. The Stalkers come across and they'll just blink forwards to help clean out the rest of this now. The Immortals go down. Yishi will type out GG. He realizes this is not going to work.